Hi everyone, hope you're well and welcome back to another video. Today is going to take a look at how lenses can be constant aperture and also how this can be fabricated. Now this is sort of an expansion of a video I posted a few weeks ago about the Tamron 28-75mm f2.8 lens after I'd noticed that the aperture blades were being programmed to stop down at the wide end and open up on the long end in order to create a constant f2.8 aperture and that without this control of the blades, the lens would actually be closer to an f2 to f2.8 variable. Now, many people were quick to point out other lenses that pull similar tricks to be a constant aperture. Now, I'll be honest, I've not tried every single constant aperture zoom lens on the market. I have, however, owned a few in my time, and I've never seen one that manipulated the aperture blades themselves. The closest I've ever seen is the likes of the Canon 24-105, to 17-40, and 16-35s that I used to own, which had what seemed to be like a shroud surrounding the edge of the aperture mechanism, which then disappeared from view when zooming in. But I'll be honest, at the time, I figured that this was just part of the lens barrel. But after some research, I've now come to realize that this was, in fact, a secondary aperture mechanism that several of their lenses use which does mechanically close down on the wide end. Well, you learn something new every day. But that is not the end just yet. This does go deeper than that, because several people made the claim that all constant aperture zoom lenses work in this manner of essentially being variable aperture lenses that just manipulate the aperture mechanism in order to create a constant aperture, which is not actually the case for all lenses. But just before we dive into the tricks and mechanics of constant aperture zooms, I'd like to take a moment to tell you about the sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare. As this video shows, everyone has gaps in their knowledge somewhere, but Skillshare could help you close those gaps up with its range of available classes. Not just in photography, but also digital art, web design, marketing, business management and the likes. Everything that you need to get a photography business going from zero to booming in no time at all. I, for example, want to improve the quality of my videos, so I'm working my way through the advanced video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro class by Jordi Vanderput. My favourite thing about Skillshare, though, isn't the range of classes or the fact that they have options for people with all skill sets, but rather that the classes are broken up into bite-sized chapters that you can keep going back to as and when you have time, which is perfect for me to work around my crazy schedule. Made all the easier by the fact that Skillshare have their own phone app, so I can keep pushing through classes whilst I'm on the go. If Skillshare sounds like the solution to you, then why not go and check them out for yourself? And the first 1,000 people to use the link in the video description will get a one-month free trial. So it is true that quite a few constant aperture zooms are technically constant aperture because the aperture mechanisms are forcing them to be. However, there was another list of Canon EF lenses which do not use a secondary aperture mechanism. And while the majority of that list were variable aperture lenses, there were actually a few constant aperture lenses as well which is something I can vouch for, as I've had three different Canon 70-200s and the Sigma 120-300mm all constant aperture, but none of them had any form of aperture mechanism visible on the wide end. Interestingly, on a side note, on the list of Canon lenses that use a secondary aperture mechanism, I noticed four variable aperture lenses. So presumably this was done for either improved image quality on the wide end because the lens can't fully open up and or to round the aperture numbers to more common values, such as being a f3.5 to 5.6 rather than say a f3.2 to 5.6. But anyway, while some lenses do manipulate their aperture mechanisms to arguably fabricate a constant aperture lens from a variable, some lenses are actually truly constant aperture. So let's break down how this previous video. A lens's f number is a ratio of the apparent diameter of the entrance pupil to of the entrance pupil versus the lens's focal length. Now I stress the word apparent. It's how wide the entrance pupil appears to be, not how wide it physically is. Because if you think about it, the aperture mechanism is a physical unit. 
its diameter wide open can't magically change. So even if you consider a variable aperture lens like the basic 18 to 55 kit lens, those are generally f3.5 to 5.6. A 5.6 or 55mm would equal an aperture diameter just shy of 10mm. A 10mm aperture mechanism at 18mm would give you f1.8. So what is actually going on? Well, let me break it down for you using some cardboard toilet roll tubes and a magnifying glass. There's a sentence I never thought I'd say. Two identical cardboard tubes, exactly the same diameter as each other. So if we imagine that these are part of a lens barrel, Looking through a single tube, the diameter at the back of the tube appears to be smaller than at the front, because it's further away from your viewing point. Place the second tube directly behind, and we double the overall length of the tube, and now the back of the tube appears even smaller still. So the amount of light able to get through a tube declines the longer the tube gets. But a lens isn't just a tube, and it doesn't just increase the focal length by increasing the length of the tube. Lenses are full of glass optics, and the relative positions of these change as the focal length changes, and all the lenses have their aperture mechanisms located somewhere amongst these optics, with some pieces of glass located in front of the mechanism, and some behind. Now, if we take the magnifying glass as a glass optic, and I hold it up behind the tube, I can move the glass back and forth, but the tube diameter always looks exactly the same. But if I place the glass in front of the tube, and now move it back and forth, you'll notice the apparent tube diameter is changing. Even though it's physically obviously remains exactly the same, the apparent size changes because the glass is magnifying it. And this is where the key to constant aperture zoom lenses comes in. When zooming, if the lens only moves optics that are located in front of the aperture mechanism, then the apparent size of the entrance pupil will be magnified at the exact rate that the focal length changes. So the relative sizes between them remains constant, and thus you get a truly constant aperture zoom lens. However, this can make lens design more complex and more costly. So to avoid that, manufacturers can make the lens also move some of the optics behind the aperture as well as in front. However, this then means that while the optics behind are contributing towards magnifying the focal length of the lens, they don't contribute anything towards magnifying the entrance pupil, and thus the focal length is increasing faster than the relative size of the entrance pupil, and we then end up with a variable aperture lens. And not all optics are moving in a constant manner. Some might move at the start of the focal length change, others might be moving later on in the focal range, and the lens might have most of the moving optics up front with only some behind, others might have more behind. All these factors contribute to variable apertures not always dropping off in a smooth, steady manner, and why a lens might suddenly drop a few steps early on in the zoom and then hold steadier for longer later on because the rear optics are moving a lot early on, but not so much further down the focal range. In summary, every lens is different, but if the lens only moves the optics in front of the aperture mechanism, then you get a true constant aperture lens. If it's moving some of the optics behind the aperture, then you'll end up with a naturally variable aperture lens. However, you can then utilize the aperture mechanism to regulate the entrance pupil at the wider end in order to keep it stopped down to the same ratio as the long end of the focal range in order to fabricate a constant aperture lens, either for image quality or marketing purposes. Either way, I think that's going to draw this video to a close. Well, until anyone starts commenting about things I've managed to get wrong, which may then result in a future video to address that issue. So if I have got something wrong, please let me know in the comments down below. If, it's, if all seems fine, then please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see any potential future retraction or correction video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.